I greet you all in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, you are welcome to our live streaming for today's service. I just want to say to you, open your hearts. Today's word is the word that you will cherish it forever and your generations to come. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father, I thank you for this moment. I thank you for this morning. I thank you, mighty God, that you are the God who speaks. You are the God who reveals deep and secret things. You are the, the God who reveals mysteries. So I thank you, mighty God, that even to this morning, Father, you are speaking to us. You are speaking to your church. You are speaking to our hearts, mighty God, giving us a word in season, mighty God, that will carry, out, that will carry us through this season. Father, I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Today's sermon, I want us to share Psalm, Psalm 91. The heading of today's sermon is Psalms 91. Psalms 91. We will be focusing on Psalms 91 for a few weeks to come. Reason be, last week we dealt with the power of Holy Communion. Immediately after that sermon, it was placed in my spirit that we need to share Psalm 91. We need to go deeper into Psalm 91 because this is the psalm that, that will carry us through this season. Hallelujah. You know, this is the only psalm in the Bible that carries the most of the promises of God in one, in one, in one chapter. Promise of protection, promises, promises of healing, God's covenant for divine protection. It, it covers every danger, sickness, disease, assault, crime, tornadoes, fire, or any other threat, storms. So this the psalm is the most, one of the most important psalms in the Bible. It covers every day. And when we need to know that we cannot talk about Psalm 91 and not speak about the blood of Jesus and the finished works of Calvary. Because it is the Psalm 91, my personal conviction is that what gave birth to Psalm 91 is the finished works of Calvary. We all know that the writer, be it Moses or David, because it's not clear who wrote Psalm 91 whether it's Moses or David, the writers of, of Psalm 91, they were all prophetic in nature. Hallelujah. So before we can go deep, I just want to put it to you that Psalm 91 is divided into five sections. It's divided into five sections. You need to write that one down because I just want to have a mini Bible study. Psalm 91 is divided into five sections. Section number one is the safety of the godly man. And his confidence. That's verse 1 and 2. And section number 2. How he is defended and preserved. Or how we are defended and preserved. Section number 3. The angels of God are our servants. As verse 11 and 12. Section number 4. We shall tread upon the necks of our adversaries. That one is a promise. We shall tread upon our necks of our adversaries. That's verse 13. And section number 5 what God says of and promises to such a person, what God says and promises to us. So I would like us to go to verse number one and just go deeper into that verse. Uh, verse one, and the, the first part of verse one, is said, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high God. In the secret, so we're going to focus on the secret, but however, I would like us to read the whole of Psalm 91. First, let us read the whole of Psalm 91 and then we'll dissect it part by part until we get all the revelation because I want you to read and pray these psalms with revelation. Hallelujah. Because this is the psalms that will take us through this season. This is the psalms that is everything that we need in this season. And therefore, revelation is very much important concerning these psalms. Let us go to Psalm 91. I want us to go. I want everyone to, to open it now. Let us all open Psalm 91. It doesn't matter which version you are reading. But let us all read it. Verse 1 up to 16. 
Uh, I'll, I'll be reading from New King James Version. New King James Version. Say, He who dwells in the sacred place of the Most High God shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in Him I will trust. Surely He shall deliver you from the snow of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and butler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that lay waste in darkness, nor of the destruction that lay waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near to you. Only with your eyes you shall look and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the most high your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent shall tremble underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, Therefore, I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me. I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for this reading of your word. Bless your word, mighty God. Let your word prevail as we release, mighty God, the revelation of your word. Let your word never come back to you void. Let your word accomplish that which you purpose to accomplish and prosper in the thing that you stand it to. In Jesus' name, amen. As I told you, the five parts of Psalms, I hope you have taken those ones down. He said, we, he who dwelt in the secret place. I want us to start by talking about the secret place. What is the secret place? What is the secret place in God? The secret place is his heart. His bosom, where his only begotten son lies. Into which he takes his people, where they are set and sealed. So the secret place is a place, is the heart of God. Is where the Son of God is. So I, wa I want to put it to you this morning that the Psalms, as much as is found in the Old Testament, has been written for us, the New Testament Christians, the covenanted Christians, the ones who are redeemed and saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. As we go on with Psalm 91, you realize that there is a core relation with the Psalms and what happens, what happened on the cross. Hallelujah. He said, he who dwells in the sacred place, the one who enjoys intimate communion with God, the one, the one who is always in the presence of God. How do we do that? How are we always in the presence of God? You know, I'm, I'm going to give you the example of what's happening currently in our world. For the first time, I was watching the television that everybody everywhere in this world is wearing a mask. They re, if you see somebody in Japan is wearing a mask, in Russia is wearing a mask, in Europe, America, they are all wearing masks. It means that there is something that, that is happening in this world. Something that is common to every man. And that something has become the dwelling place of all men. Every person has set their heart on the pandemic. It's very much important. Every person, they've set their heart on the pandemic. We want to know who's going to die next. What will happen next? When will the vaccine be rolled out? And all these things. So, you see, it is easy to be moved from the secret place to where the enemy wants us to be. Because when you are in the secret place, you hear what God wants you to hear. 
That's what the Bible said. He, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High God shall abide. You dwell and abide. You know, you don't only dwell, you dwell and abide. What does abide? You make that place your permanent address. Hallelujah. So it is stand right now. I want you, there, there are some of us, we are reading Psalms 91 every day. And after reading Psalms 91, we step out of Psalms 91 and we listen to what is happening in the world and, and, and be convicted by what is happening in the world. After we are convicted of what is happening in the world, we step back into Psalm 91 out of fear. Oh God, you know, it is too bad. I want to tell you, it is bad. But we that dwell in the secret place of the Most High God, how do you dwell? First and foremost, Romans 12, 2, you renew your mind. You renew your mind by the word of God. This is the time to spend most, if not all of your time, if possible, meditating upon the word of God. There is something that I'm doing it in, in my house. Every day, or most of the time, if, if, if I want to tell the truth, most of the time, I just play the Bible to saturate the environment with the Bible. I just to release the word of God in my environment. Why? Because there is a strategy that is being used by the enemy. The enemy is saturating the environment with fear. You open the TV they'll be telling you this. You open the radio, they'll be telling you this. So I want you to tell we cannot dwell in the sacred place of the most high God if our minds, spirit, soul, and body are filled with the ways of fear. That moment, the moment you allow yourself to be filled with the ways of fear, you have automatically removed yourself from the dwelling place. You are saying, I wonder what's coming to me. I wonder what's coming next to my children. I wonder what's coming next to my family. I wonder what's coming to my parents. Dwell in the secret place of the Most High God. What do you then? The Bible says the 24 elders, they don't sleep day and night. What do they say? Well, they say, holy, holy Lord God Almighty who has and is to come. When they bow down their heads and when they lift up their heads, they see a different type of glory. They say holy. They bow down, they lift up their heads, they see a different type of glory. They say holy. I'm telling you, the angels who are worshiping God in heaven don't know the evil that is happening around the throne of God. The only thing that they see is the holiness of God. The only thing that they see is the faithfulness of God. They see nothing else but the faithfulness of God. That's why they worship him day and night. Holy, holy Lord God Almighty who has in it to come. They bow down. They see his holiness. They bow down. They see his majesty. That is what, that is, that is what happens to a person who dwells in the secret place of the most high God. All that you will see despite what is happening around you is the goodness of the Lord. All that you will see, despite what's happening around you, is the power of God. Hallelujah. Psalm, Psalms 31 verse 20. Let's go Psalms 31 verse 20. Psalms 31 verse 20. I want you to dwell. Child of God, dwell there. Don't be moved. Maybe you are losing your love. Maybe there are loved ones. There are people that you know. That, that has been affected by by this. But dwell there. Don't be moved. Don't doubt God. He will never. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I have engraved your name in the palm of my hand. That says the Lord. You are the apple of my eye. Do not doubt him. Psalm 31 verse 20 says, you, you shall hide them in the secret place of your presence. From the plots of men, you shall keep them secretly in a pavilion. From the strife of tongues. I want you to see that there are two things. In the secret place of the Most High God, you are hidden from the plots of men. You are hidden from the tongues. Tongues represent the words. The words that are being spoken to inflict pain and death in this world. But we that 
dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High God, we are hidden from those ways. They are not your portion. They are not. A, you need to stand up and declare and decree that these ways are not my portion. My family shall not be asked this this. What? Stand up and say, I am in the secret place of the Most High God. Hallelujah. He said, you shall keep him secret in the pavilion from the strife of tongues. 20, you shall hide him in the secret place of your presence. I want you to know that in the secret place, there is the presence of God. You know, when there is no electricity in my house, we, we have a, when, Lord, Lord shed, when there is Lord shedding, we have a gas stove. Whenever I look at the gas stove, when it's burning, if I'm cooking or doing anything, when I look at the flame of the gas stove, when I look around the gas stove, there, there are things that I don't see. I don't see flies or mosquitoes. They'll be flying somewhere, maybe in the sitting room, or, but around the stove, there is, there is nothing like that flying. So when you are in the presence of God, you are, you are in the fire. Because Hebrews 12, 29 says, for my God is a consuming fire. So when you dwell in the secret place of the Most High God, you are right inside the fire, the consuming fire. That consuming fire does not burn you. It purifies you, but it burns everything else except for you. For our God, our secret place cannot be a secret place without God being the consuming fire. Hebrews 12, 29, for our God is a consuming fire. Hallelujah. Psalm 27, verse 5. Psalm 27 verse 5 says something very much interesting that I love. Say, for in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the sacred place of his tabernacle, he shall hide me. He shall set me high upon a rock. In the time of trouble, he shall hide me in the sacred place of the tabernacle. You are hidden, child of God. In this time, when the whole world is troubled, you are hidden. That's why, but the Bible doesn't say God forces us to dwell in the secret place. He says, he that dwelleth, meaning you have a free will. I want you to choose today to dwell in the secret place of the Most High God. How do you choose that? It's a very good question. John 6, 56, partake in the Holy Communion. John 6, 56 says, He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him. When you partake in the Holy Communion, you are abiding in the sacred place of the Most High God. He who eats my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and I in him. Check it out. He that dwell in the secret place of the Most High God. So, through the blood of Jesus Christ, we dwell in the secret place of the Most High God. That's the reason why the combination of Psalm 91 and Holy Communion is the most powerful combination that the enemy hates because he knows that those who are taking Holy Communion every day, those who are meditating upon Psalm 91 daily, they are dwelling in the secret place of the Most High God. Can we go to John 6.56? John 6.56 is important that we know what you are doing. Don't, don't just speak this psalm. Know what you are doing. Let us know what you are doing. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him. Hallelujah. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High God, he shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. You know, Revelation 5 verse 9 says something very interesting. I want, I'll, I'll, because I, 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 I want us to, to understand our dwelling, that this dwelling in the secret place, the Holy of Holies in the tabernacle, was reserved only for high priests. It was the sacred place. Only the high priest will go in there once a year with, a, with the blood of animal and, and sprinkle the blood upon the mercy seat for the sins. That's why 
the mercy seat for the sins of the children of Israel that they've committed the whole year. Once a year, a priest will go there. But today, we, we don't go there once a year because we are redeemed and saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. We dwell in the secret place. We have become high priests. Can you go to Revelation? I, I want you to see something. Oh, yes, Lord. I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Revelation chapter 5, verse 9. He say, I'll, rest, I'll start with verse 9 and 10. And they sang a new song saying, you are worthy to take the scroll and to open his seals. For you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood. Out of every tribe and tongue, people and nation, you have made us kings and priests to our God and we shall reign on earth. You see, priests were the only one allowed to enter the Holy of Holies, the secret place. No one was able to enter that place. But if you go to Hebrews 10.19, Hebrews 10.19, it will show you where you are right now. Hebrews 10.19, Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. We have entered the holiest through the blood of Jesus. It is we who dwell in the secret place of the Most High God. What is the secret place? The Holy of Holies. In the blood of Jesus. Can I tell you something? Hebrews 10, 24 says, and this blood speaketh. When you are dwelling there in the secret place of the Most High God, the blood will be speaking. The Holy Communion, the blood that you are taking daily, the Holy Communion and the blood that you can build, they will be speaking better things for you and your family because you dwell in the secret place of the Most High God. That's why I say it's impossible to speak about Psalm 91 and omit the blood of Jesus Christ. It is not possible to speak about the secret place and not mention the Holy of Holies. And it's not possible to mention the Holy of Holies and not mention the blood of Jesus Christ. For we, we who dwell in the secret place of the Most High God are there in the blood of Jesus Christ. So be rest assured that when you meditate upon Psalm 91, you have activated the voice of the blood of Jesus Christ. He's speaking against the evil blood. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm sure if I were you right now, I would be very much excited. That, oh, is this what it means? We who dwell in the secret place of the Most High God, Check here. I'm talking about Psalm 91. I have even moved to verse 2. I'm stuck in verse 1. Because verse 1 is rich. Is, that, is, is, is this what it means? That I who dwell in the secret place of the Most High God, does it relate with the blood of Jesus Christ? Does it relate with the fact that I have been made a high priest and a king to my God that shall reign on earth? Does it mean that I have entered the Holy of Holies through the blood of Jesus Christ. That's the reason why as you read Psalm 91, go further, it says, no plague shall come near your dwelling. Why? Because of the blood. Because what can, what can, what can override the power of the blood of Jesus? Hallelujah. You know, I'm trying, you know, there, there is something that is very much exciting, but we'll, 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 we'll share about it later. In the secret place of the Most High God, it's where Jesus is. Ephesians 2.6. Let us go to Ephesians 2.6. If, if Ephesians 2.6 says, Ephesians 2.6 says, If you are there, say shalom. He say, okay, 
I want us to start it from four. But God was rich in mercy because of his great love, which he loved us. Even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace we have been saved in blankets. And raised up and together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Wow. Do you know where you are seated in the second place? In heavenly places. You know, I want you to know that you, there are two types of environments that controls you. One is your physical environment. Two, the spiritual environment. But the latter supersedes the first one, the physical environment. If your spiritual environment is not assured of your position, of your spiritual address, if you, if you don't know that you are seated with Christ, you won't know that you are dwelling in the secret place of the Most High God. So, your first environment, for you to be in charge of your physical environment, understand your spiritual environment, understand where you are. I'm seated with Christ in heavenly places. And then, your physical environment will follow suit. Because nothing happens in the physical that doesn't start in the spiritual. I said it last week, that your, every sickness starts where? In the spirit. And then comes to the what? To your soul. And then your body. When your mind receives it and accepts it, your body receives it. So when your spiritual environment is set up by your understanding that I dwell in the secret place of the most high God. I am seated with Christ in heavenly places far above all powers and principalities. When you understand that, you have set up your physical environment. Hallelujah. That's the reason why you'll be surprised that I was with this person so and so. This and this happened, but it did not happen to me. Why? You might be at the same place with people, with people physically, but spiritually, you are not in the same place. What happens to them around you won't happen to you. That's the reason why Psalm 91 says, a thousand may fall at your side. 10,000 to write them, but it shall not come near you. Why? Because of the determination of your spiritual environment. You are dwelling in the secret place of the Most High God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us go to part two of verse one. It says, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. What is the shadow? You know, when Almighty, all-powerful God, all-knowing, all El Shaddai, all-sufficient God, he's got power, he's got grace to give, to provide. So the moment the Bible says you shall abide, before I can talk about the shadow, you shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I want you to understand the Almighty first. Almighty means... Your provision is protected by his power. Your, 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 your health is protected by his power. Not only your life, also your livelihood, meaning your business, your job, your salary is protected by what? His almighty. And now let's go to the shadow. Mm. You know, most of the time, when I visit, when I was young, when I used to visit my grandparents in the farm, one thing that I enjoy watching was the mother chicken and her babies or her chicks. Whenever she will hear a sound of an eagle or a crow or anything that is dangerous, You'll only hear the sound of the chicks, but you won't be able to see them anymore. They'll be hidden under the wings. They'll be hidden under the shadow. So when the eagle come, it will be looking for the chicks. It will only see the mother who has turned herself round. She looks like a ball. She, the eagle cannot access the chicks. It must first go through the, the mother. So even us, we are hidden under the shadow of the Almighty. Can I tell you something? You know, your shadow is different. Your shadow 
has the glory in it. And that glory has been activated by the blood of Jesus Christ. You know, before the release of the children of Israel from Egypt, something happened. After they slaughtered the lamb, applied the blood on the doorpost, as the moment they started moving, a shadow appeared, a cloud of glory. And that cloud of glory was there to protect them because they have never been in the wilderness before. So only in the glory of the Lord, they were safe against wild animals, serpents, and, and, and any other thing, and another dangerous things. That's the reason why the Bible says none of them were sick or feeble. Why? They were under the shadow of the Almighty. The moment you partake in Holy Communion, the very same blood of the Lamb that activated the shadow of the glory of the Lord that came through the cloud of fire by night and the cloud that gave them a shadow by day is the same shadow that is set to work in your family. When the Bible says, you shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty, it is not just a normal shadow. Under that shadow, a lot of things happen. I remember in the scripture says, when the army of Egypt were chasing the Israelites, the very same cloud of glory stood between them. In the Egyptian side, it was very dark. The army of Egypt could not see the Israelites. On the Israelites' side, it was light. The shadow stood between them. So when you are abiding under the shadow of the Almighty, the very same shadow is able to separate you from calamities and danger and put you in the, in the safe place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are protected. You are, he said, you shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I want you to know that God took charge of the atmosphere of the Israelites through the shadow of his glory. When you are abiding under the shadow of the Almighty, God is taking charge of the atmosphere of your place. Such that such that no snake in the desert had the power to come out and bite one of them. Aging, their clothes refused to age because they were under the shadow of the glory of the Lord. The Bible said they grew together with their clothes. Everybody was healthy under the shadow. And in that shadow, it, the shadow became also their source of provision because every provision that they got was because of the glory of the Lord upon them. When you, when you, when you declare this psalm say, under the shadow of the Almighty, understand that the shadow is the glory of the Lord and under his glory there is provision, there is protection, there is increase, there is multiplication. Even though the people will say people are losing their jobs, these ones, these ones are losing their money, they are losing their houses, they are losing their cars. Because we are under the shadow of the Almighty, none of us will lose anything. Instead, because of the glory of the Lord, we shall multiply. Because of the glory of the Lord, we shall have direction. Because of the glory of the Lord, we shall increase. Because we are under the shadow of Almighty. Hallelujah. The shadow also provides direction. Exodus 40. Exodus 40, 36 to 37. Exodus 40, 36 to 37. There is something interesting here. That will, that will be happening as you meditate upon this psalm. Um, it says... Whenever the cloud was taken up from above the tabernacle, the children of Israel will go onward in all their journey. But if the cloud was not taken up, they did not journey till the day it was taken up. 38, for the cloud of the Lord was about the tabernacle by day and fire over it by night in the sight 
of the house of Israel. I want you to know this. That when you are under the shadow of the Almighty, when everybody else is confused and directionless, God will give you ideas. What to do, when to do, and how to do it. This is the when you are under the shadow of the Almighty. This is the time to say, Father, I won't move until you say so. I won't make any hasty decision until you say so. I won't say anything until you say so. Why? Because I'm under the shadow of the Almighty. You are protected. You are protected. No evil shall befall you and your family. The cloud of glory that is upon you has become spiritual. We cannot see it with our, with our naked eyes now. It, it has become the director of our environment. Whenever you sit down and pray, when you pray for your families, when you pray for your relatives, the very, same, the very same shadow of glory becomes their shadow of glory by the reason of your obedience. So church, it is time for us to stand up and pray and understand who we are in this Psalms 91. I want you to listen to this message, to this sermon again and again. I've only dealt with verse 1 today. And I'll stop here in Psalm 91 verse 1. I didn't go to verse 2. I will say to the Lord. Because verse 2 speaks about what you say to yourself. What you declare. How, how, how you handle the word of truth. I only dealt with verse 1 to with verse 1 of Psalm 91. And I want you to know that where you are, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Psalm 17 verse 8. Psalm 17 verse 8 read this. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me under the shadow of your wings. You know, when he keeps you as the apple of, your, of his eye, you see what God sees. Hallelujah. Because the apple of your eye, those who did biology is where your pupil is, you see what God sees. I declare and decree by the reason of you being under the shield of the God Almighty, you have the vision of God. You see what God sees. You hear what God hears. You live by the direction of God. You live by the direction of God. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. We give you the glory, mighty God. We give you the honor, the praise and adoration. We thank you, mighty God, that you are the God that liveth. We thank you, Father, for Psalm 91 verse 1, that indeed... We dwell in the secret place of the Most High God. We are hidden under the shadow of the Almighty. We thank you, mighty God, that in you we live, in you we move, in you we have our being. We thank you, Father, that we are protected. We thank you for your weight. Oh, yes, Lord. I appreciate you. I appreciate your weight. And I know that, Father, your weight shall not come back to us void. Your word, mighty God, shall not come back to you void. It shall always accomplish that you purpose to accomplish and prosper in the thing that we send it to. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you.